Hello, famous horse. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Hello, Demon Mama. How are you? Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? Let me just get your name up on the screen real quick. Uh, your Twitch, your Twitter, is, or sorry, your Twitch is uh, Twitch tv forward slash famous horse right it's just no additions or anything like that right i'm famous horse everywhere ironically i am not a horse uh i'm sure viewers already figured that out though thank you so much for having me on how are you doing tonight i am doing great and thank you for having me on since we are both streaming we are we are co-streaming this um yeah let me yeah. just get your your sound level up give me a second here um because it is a little a little soft at the moment let's see can you give me a test 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 real quick Test, test, test. All that right. Better? That's better. Is that better, chat? How's that sound? How's that sound? Chat sound good? Good, good? Okay, I think so. I think that's good. Okay, it's <laughs> chat, good. Chat's like, what the fuck? I was promised a horse. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry to disappoint you. I know our first impression is that I've lied to you. I'm so sorry. And maybe in time, the hurt will go away. Well, they'll deal with it. It's okay. Um... I just realized we don't have video up, but that would be hard to do because I'm on Discord chat right now. Yeah, I was trying to figure it out. I can. Do you have a whereby? What's a whereby? No. Okay. Um. Because I was having my video go into my stream, and then I had your video. Although you're a little desynced because uh, the delay. Hmm. Okay. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Um, hmm. Pro streamer. I, I should have thought, thought of this in advance. You know what? Let's just fly with it. About it. Yeah, I was thinking about it earlier, and then by the time I thought of it, you were already in the stream, and I was like, eh, uh, we'll figure it out. I need to get a whereby account. Oh, yeah, I can pop out video chat, but wait, but then I'd need to oh. grab two sources, which would be difficult. Well, I can switch wait a my source. So I have a Discord cam set up, so I can switch Let my try source. This. Okay, I've got an idea. Why don't you um why don't you add video to this stream call in and then I'll pop it out and then we'll we'll work with that. I'll, I think I can make it work from there. If you add All right. Streaming. All right, let's do that. Um so I'm going to go ahead <gasps> there and There we go. I can do video. it. I can do it. Okay, this will work. This will actually work. Bam. Yeah, we got it. Now hold on. Now I got to go like this and then I put yours on the big and then I go yeah, like this. This will work great. Thank you. That was a good idea, chat. Thank you so, so much. Let's see if my video pops up because the first source to have it was OBS, so I just killed it in there. Let's see if it pops up. Um, oh, you know what you might need to do? Uh, you might need to turn off the uh like hardware acceleration um or yeah, I think it's called. Oh, there we go. We got oh, you. There we go. It was Fuck coming yeah. through NVIDIA broadcast. Look at that. You, my cam link. you know, your lighting setup blows mine out of the water. And it's really, it's really impressive. It's really impressive, honestly. It looks well, I'm great. I'm glad you like the lighting setup. And now my chat can see me too, double. Oh, you know, I just, I like pink. I'm going for the aggressive bisexual lighting here. You hey, know? you know what? We approve of that hardcore here. Listen, we approve of that big time That's here. That's right. Let's freaking go. Yeah, this is a, this is a gay ass zone. Let's be honest. Um, so let's see here. Let me just adjust this here so that people know who we're talking to and, and then we can get into it. So before we get super, super far into it, why don't you give the channel uh, just a little bit of a piece of what you're all about because uh, we just got raided by a, a, a This tiny tiny little youtuber named Vosh um, I don't know oh, if you've ever okay. heard of Vosh uh, Name rings a bell. Yeah. I can't quite place it is Vosh is Vosh the uh, The guy that wears the armor is that him the guy that wears the arm? No, that's a different guy. Yeah, no. Yeah um, I, I don't know that he wears armor. He did wear a, a, a lemur kigu once, and I oh, think wow. that was that's kind of a form of, of armor. That's, pre that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was I was trying to make an armored skeptic joke because that was the first YouTuber <laughs> that came into my head, but you know, a little different, just a little, a different. little, a little different. Yeah, probably you guys will be seeing me uh, in a maid costume pretty soon because when we hit 50 subs this month, I have to stream in a anime cosplay maid outfit. So that's fun. have to, yeah. Thank you so much for that dono there. <laughs> Usually hang out in the zone stream. Sometimes, Sometimes Bosch but, but wanted to send, send some love three. Thank you so well, much for that dono. Sorry if I interrupt a little bit with donos. I, um, I just have it. Oh, no, no. Hell yeah. You got the donos. Let's go. Yeah.
Um, Thank you for donating to Demon Mama. Do it. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, that's hype as fuck. Uh, we really like uh, the maid outfit streams here, um, for sure. Um, real quick, uh, just so people know, uh, what 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 pronouns do you use? Uh, I use uh, either he or they. Okay. All right. I will add this here. Yeah, not not a big problem for me usually. Okay. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna turn down the dono volume a little bit too. There we go. Um. Okay. So yeah. Um. So sick. Yeah. Give us what you're all about, famous horse. Right. Right. I mean, like you know, I don't have like a a good spiel like you got when people come in and raid. You know, I'm famous horse. I've been around on Twitter for freaking forever. I'm one of those ancient GIF avatar kind of people. So I mean, I've gamed forever, and I've been a communist since I was twelve, maybe. Impressive. Um, I was converted by a teacher who, fun backstory, uh, his father was one of the guys at the Winter Palace during the October Revolution. Wow. Uh, yeah, so old school, old school Bolshevik. His son was also an old school Bolshevik, so he kind of converted me from being like a, a normal kid when I was like 12. And pretty much ever since then, I've been various shades of communist, and pretty much oh, I just decided... Yeah, I decided to stream because, like, hey, I got dumped at the beginning of lockdown, didn't have anything else to do, so I'm like, if I'm playing video games, I might as well stream myself doing it, maybe make a couple friends. Yeah. So I just started getting into politics streaming eh, pretty recently because I saw there's not a ton of people of, like, ML types of folks streaming, mostly, mm -hmm. you know, sock dems, anarchists and stuff like that. True, true. It's like, you know, why not? Yeah. That's kind of my spiel. I mean, I am always, uh, I always welcome um, more lefties uh, into right the on. space, and I will, I will Hell say, yeah. um, the the number of of ML streamers is pretty low. There's a handful. We got Milk T Leninism. Um, I know that Zanzi um, tends to lean that way, who I really, really respect. Um, and yeah, so, but but yeah, there are a bit more of the um, the anarchist uh streamers out there I, I i don't know maybe this is a little wrong of me but uh streaming tends to be like a thing that um that a lot of like people with adhd get into and uh anarchists also for some reason there's a lot of anarchists who have adhd out i don't know one of those things it's not like exclusive or anything but <laughs> it just seems to be that way so maybe that's the thing um I know that's the truth for myself. I don't but. know. I got pretty severe ADHD myself. Hey, there you uh, go. Very severe ADHD. If I'm trying to read something, it usually takes me two times it would the normal person. And nonetheless, so, yeah. you've still managed to be the the a member of the theory focused uh, um, tendency. But that's great. That's awesome. Um, oh, you cut out for a second there. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I think you muted. Okay. Uh, no, it's just uh, my Streamlabs is really weird, and if that's in the forefront, the push to talk doesn't work. But oh, hey, I read a lot of theory when I was younger and was still properly medicated because I had insurance from my parents. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, that's the insurance thing is rough because uh, oh, we love ADHD meds aren't aren't cheap off of insurance. No, they, um, they yeah, they're not. They are not. Without insurance, uh, I went to go fill it, and it was going to be four hundred dollars for a month script, and I was just like. Uh, I'm just gonna just not do that. Yeah, um, I got, I got sort of, uh, what's the right word? Uh, universal healthcare pilled. Um, the first time I, uh, the first time that I was no longer on insurance that was like provided by my parents, you know, because as a part of their job, there was right. a brief period between when I was yet to, uh, yet to be approved for my coverage with my work and where I was off my parents' coverage and I got, a prescription for my HRT, something that, you know, being trans, I need. Um, right, and right. it was $180. And I was just for one, for one of the scripts per month. And I was just like, Jeez. holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah. They get you. So yeah, I, healthcare is something I talk about a lot, um, on this channel. Um, talk about a lot of topics but healthcare is one of the ones we revisit a lot that definitely yep. woke me up in fact i would say that healthcare was sort of the door that got me mm -hmm. into most other like lefty stuff so um so yeah I mean, when, that makes sense yeah. it's a material thing that people see a lot more direct especially if they're in the middle class that's something that's in their face they see it and that's a good doorway to further left radicalization for people when they're like wait why is it so fucking expensive why is it five hundred dollars to see a doctor 
Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think healthcare is one of the things that, um, like, focusing on as lefties who are involved in, like, online advocacy, it's one of the most accessible um, and universally experienced challenges. And people sometimes don't have the answers. Right. It's, sometimes it's a really great way to, um, you know, introduce people to concept of, concepts, more complicated com concepts in leftism um, or even just in lefty thought. Um, by starting the conversation on something that everybody understands and everybody knows is horrible, healthcare. <laughs> so yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like one of those things that like everyone has experienced it at some point if they're an American and they've experienced the absolute absurdity of it, and they they want to know why. Yeah. Why is it expensive? Why is it inaccessible? And then when they hear the arguments from like liberals and the conservatives, like, well, you know, actually this line goes here and it meets this line here, which is why you should die. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's what it boils down to. And they dress yeah, it up in right. a lot of flowery language. My favorite one in recent years, this, this, and I, 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 I say my favorite. It's, I hate this for anyone who doesn't, who didn't catch <laughs> that sarcasm. I fucking yeah. hate this is when, uh, Dems, especially this is especially popular with Democrats right now, um, is to say, they'll say, oh, we want access to to affordable health care and i'm like oh it's such a weasel word it is such a weasel word because you look at it and you're like well okay well they say affordable health care well that's great well first of all there's it's a double weasel word because first they say they yep. want you to have access to it well it's like well i have access by a manner of speaking to all kinds of things i have right. access to a yacht if i walk down the street <laughs> and look at it i have access mm -hmm. to it right um, mm -hmm. And then the affordable part is the second part. And it's like, well, right. wait a second. What do you consider? What is considered affordable? What's affordable? Yeah. And how do you define it? And who defines it? Yeah, exactly. And and to be honest, I think we have, a, you know, we have a bit of an answer here. They just don't like to say it out loud, which is mm -hmm. that economists have already figured this out, which is uh, the, in the concept of, of elasticity. Um, and... Uh, uh, highly i believe it and i may get the direction of this wrong but I, if i remember correctly it's highly elastic um commodities are things where the price can go up and up and up but because people need it they will pay whatever the fuck the price goes to so it doesn't go back down so it doesn't go back down right yeah. and um and and i think that's the right i think i i always get mixed up if it's highly or low which is but that's the concept the concept is it's something right. Um, a, it's something that is so desperately needed, like a medication, like insulin, like mm -hmm. something like that, like HRT, where people will pay any price or they'll die. Basically. Exactly. It, there's, it's not an option like shelter, yeah. water, stuff like that. Like what are people in my chat was just saying that their ex had a cousin who got uh, genetic pancreatic, uh, pancreatic cancer yep. or pancreatitis at 21 and had to declare bankruptcy. And, you know, if they had their way, they, you wouldn't be able to discharge medical debt like you can, can't discharge student debt. Right. But, yeah, everybody needs health care. Everybody needs shelter. So, as a result, you can charge pretty much whatever you want, and the options are pay it or die. And it's the same sort of thing that happened in 2008 when, after the, you know, housing collapse. J.P. Morgan Chase, a bunch of these big banks yep. went and they bought houses all over the place, especially in low income neighborhoods that weren't considered valuable because then what they do, they create artificial scarcity. They don't rent out half these units. They drive up demand and then they can start charging more in these undesirable low income working class areas and they can bleed or try to bleed a rock. You know, I, I said the expression yep. wrong, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Get blood from uh, a stone. Yeah, yeah. Get uh, draw blood from a stone. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's, it's one of those things where, I mean, that gets into, that touches on the topic of gentrification, which is another thing I, uh, mm -hmm. another theme. Um, okay. Oh, okay. I've been corrected. It is inelastic demands. Inelastic I always mix up because they talk okay. about, yeah, it's, it's silly. Um, but thank you. I, I'm thank not you a good that. economic or either. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I've, I've studied e economics, uh, but I, I'm not going to lie. I found the, the, uh, sort of basic theories of economics incredibly boring um though nonetheless somewhat important <laughs> to understand um, right yeah but i always forget the terminology exactly but the concepts are there so <laughs> they're in here so right right you but, know uh, the concepts it's it just it's like you know playing uh connect the wire from among us in your brain yeah exactly <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, uh, this is something that like, that's really important in the area I live in. I live in Seattle. Um, okay. and, Ooh. uh, Seattle is one of the places Sorry in this country. That. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love it here. I love, I love this place. It's just right. when it comes to rent, 
Um, Jesus meant. Christ, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely absurd, and it doesn't matter where you are. I live in a firmly, uh, a firmly working class um, borough of Seattle, and the rent is still mm -hmm. outrageous. It's unbelievable how how of ridiculous it is. it is. And this is done, and and this is there is a there is a formula, a strategy that is used to do this, and that's another one of those topics. Housing is one of those ones that I think that lefties can really build bridges to yeah. basically anybody, anybody who has paid rent, um, anybody who's, <laughs> right. who's, who has experienced the side effects of gentrification, even if they, mm -hmm. they don't realize that they have. Even passively. Yeah, yeah, passively. Like, um, I think there's a bridge that can be built there in like a really, really good way. And so that's something I like to talk about yeah. a lot um, because I think it's I something that affects a lot of people. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that it's the same sort of stuff. These in in elast things with inelastic demand, as I have now learned, is the yeah. term, right? That's the the main place you can build bridges with people is because it's stuff they've experienced. Mm -hmm. It's material conditions that they understand. And I, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, and I think one of the things that can happen online is, um, I, I don't know, it, it really depends on the space that you're in, but I think there's this tendency to sort of um, assume that people are better off than they are in general when you're talking to audiences yeah. online. And the fact of the matter is that hmm. in my experience, at least that is not the case. Like mo I mean, by sheer statistics, most people in America have struggled with rent. Most people in America have right. struggled with healthcare. Most people in America make a shitty wage. And so we yep. have the numbers on our side in that way, when it comes to advocacy, when it comes to reaching out. And I that, do think, interesting... what's that? I said, that's an interesting point that people thinking of, people at large is better off than they statistically are it happens a lot in uh, especially when you're talking about the united states and of course um this right. is not to to like say that there's not incredible privileges from living in the united states at all there it's absolutely are before. but the fact of the matter is that what we've been sold by sort of the media at large um which of course has an incentive in selling products and whatnot is this idea that every every american is like uh you know, like living in an affluent nation and therefore they benefit from that. When in truth, right. most Americans don't taste any of that. Only the very top percentage ever taste what we call an affluent nation. The affluence right. of our nation is locked away in in the bank accounts of people like Jeff Bezos and and, and Bill right. Gates and, and Donald Trump even. Um, <laughs> and, and not actually really ever coming down i think that people sometimes right. forget and uh, buy and unintentionally down? what's that yeah the trickle down. Trickling down yeah yeah they buy into the um mm -hmm. they, they they buy into the um the this sort of like trickle down um ideology unintentionally and forget that like right. actually you know when you're talking to people online chances are a lot of them are going to be firmly working class a lot of the right. people like you know, um, and I guess that is one of the one of the small benefits we have is that because internet is in this weird space where a lot of people have access to it one way or another, um, like, you know, people who are on the internet might have internet, but they might not have much else. They might not right. have healthcare. They might not have a car. They might not have you know regular like uh, they might li they most likely don't live in a place that has public transit. And these are issues that can speak to tons and tons and tons of people. Right. Um, which is why, you know, part of the reason why I'm so excited to to get to talk to you as another um, another mm -hmm. person who's looking to get into politics, because obviously yeah. I'm a big I'm a big politics bitch. That's what I do. I, I'm a politics say. bitch. You yeah, don't, I don't say. say. Yeah. It's like what I do 90 percent of the time. What a, what a shared interest. Yeah. But, but yeah, um, yeah sort of I wanted to say something what you're saying yeah. um, uh, specifically about the, the quality of life and all that in America. It's sort of. Um, I think a good way to say it is that it's a first world nation where most people are living uh, a second world at best quality of life. And it's sort of the way I see it is the United States, in, in fear of a, a radical labor movement, in fear of, you know, having more demands made, they basically, the ruling class looked at the Soviet Union, that was there as a threat. So they gave workers concessions. They gave them some of the crumbs off the table and they gave them an okay quality of life. But the second that threat was gone and financialization occurred, 
uh, they didn't have to give it to us anymore. There's no more. There's no other alternative, like Margaret Thatcher said, right? So what are we going to do? So they start taking away what little stuff they've given us. But at the same time, you know, there's telling the mythos of the American dream. You can still make it if you work hard. When that's not going to fucking happen. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, without that sort of threat to the ruling class, um, you know, uh, geopolitically, they don't have to offer anything anymore. And that's why you've seen this resurgence of neoliberalism come in the past 30 years. Yeah. And it's funny that you mentioned that because that's what we were talking. I mean, I don't, I think you were probably here, right? You popped I, in a couple I, times. I was but... muted for a little bit because yeah, I was yeah. doing homework. We, we were talking about neoliberalism specifically oh, um, okay. because um, we were talking about like, uh, it started off, what started it was the powder keg that, that, that went off was the, the fist bump between uh kamala and, and i know right right yeah yeah there's so it's bad a big club it's a big club and you're not fucking in it yep you're not fucking in it yep it's true and i mean that is the thing right like i mean isn't that not like just sort of like the most boiled down emblematic expression yep. of what what neoliberalism really means is this kind of it's this like on the face we're gonna say that we're progressive but you know but you know, when we think no one's looking or we don't even care if they're looking, we are exactly. ultimately hobnobbing with people who literally just don't care if you're if you live or die. Right. And and didn't they spend the campaign saying that that Trump and these uh, that the Demo or sorry, the Republicans that worked with him were irredeemable, that they hated you, which is true. They fucking hate you. Yeah. And, you know, we are going to Washington. We're running this campaign to put a stop to it. And then Trump's one of his biggest enablers, Lindsey Graham, fucking hate that dude. She smiles, fist bumps him. He pats her on the back because ultimately at the end of the day, they're all fucking friends. Just yep. like Trump was friends with the Clintons because it, they're all in the ruling class. And ultimately, uh, they're always going to side with their own class interests over even the pretense of helping people. Yeah. And that's the funny thing because um, I, I, it's funny, like, I was joking about this the other day about how, um, you know, as we see, and I, this is another thing I'd like to talk to you about as we go on, but as we see Trump uh, sort of accelerate us and accelerate us towards a wall, which is, is there going, is this legitimacy crisis going to boil over into something more than just a legitimacy crisis? Um, you know, of I think him... that's an interesting point. Yeah. Uh, I've but... been talking about that a lot because I'm interested in constitutional law. Yeah. Yeah. And, and with that in mind, it's, I think there was like, there was this, I was laughing because I'm like, you know, the libs were right about one thing, uh, when they were, when we were teasing them like a couple years ago about being like, Oh, Trump is Hitler. And then we're like, ah, actually, you know, lefties, the libs were kind of right on that one, but it's funny because even though they were right on it, they, they didn't internalize it. It was just rhetoric to them. And now yeah. they're just, they're <laughs> just hobnobbing with them again. And it's just well, like, Oh my God. It's so frustrating. Well, it's like, like I was talking about this with, with Ellie Valley last night, but it's basically where the, the worst crimes, no matter if they use them for rhetorical points, these terrible crimes are just going to be whitewashed and sanitized. Um, for, because, you know, like all these libs were talking about, like, yes, Trump is a fascist. You're right. He is a fucking fascist. And then I can't wait for Biden to throw him in jail. And then Biden's immediately like, we need to heal and work forward as a nation. It's the same thing. Uh, Obama didn't throw any of the war criminals from Bush in jail. There was no yep. trials. He didn't turn them over to the ICC because bipartisanship and continuity of the government and ruling class without friction is far more important than any sense of justice. Yep, and this is what we were talking about uh, in the segment that I did right before you came on, which is why I was yep. I was so glad that I decided to do that first because I had a feeling we would be talking about this a lot a lot more. Yeah. which is you nailed it. The desperate need for us to to push beyond Biden, like far beyond Biden, we have <laughs> yeah. to get rid of this like brunch liberal mentality. We got to get rid of it. We have to. It has to go. It's got to go. Oh. Because things we love brunch, don't we, folks? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because like I, I keep I've been trying to tell people, and, and and this has like been emblematic of my entire career on political Twitch has been mm -hmm. going onto panels and telling people like I hope you realize normal is gone and normal yep. wasn't working for anybody to begin with. Like when you say normal, I look outside and I see, oh my God, our our COVID numbers are at triple what they were when we last locked ourselves in our houses and we're going into winter 
And what yeah. we have is what we have to wait for. We have a lame duck Trump. And then January in the depths of winter, provided everything goes smoothly and Donald Trump doesn't push for some sort of wild shit. Um, he will. Which he will, but we'll see how far he can succeed. But provided he doesn't succeed at some wild shit, then we're going to be stuck in a position where we have Biden in the hardest winter that any of us will have seen in our lives. Yeah. And economic collapse, death everywhere, people going fucking insane because they've been locked in their houses. Yeah. And so I was talking about, maybe you caught this part, I don't know, but I, I mentioned to people that, and I think, I think we'll be able to find a lot of, um, a lot of shared ground between even, even across tendencies. You know, I tend to be more anarcho leaning. You tend to be more ML leaning. Right. And uh, I told people that we save us, that we fix us. The Democrats are not going to do it. The Democrats are never going to oh, come no. do that. They've got their comfortable yachts. They've got their ingrained wealth and all this shit, just like the Republicans do. The Republicans are more uh, disgusting and vicious for sure. I mean, I voted for Joe Biden, obviously. I advocated for people to vote for Joe Biden because he's way much rather struggle against a neolib than a fascist. But... Mm -hmm. We cannot, we cannot stop there. We can't. We have right. no choice. I mean, yeah. the, the stakes are simply too high across the board. I mean, even if we're just talking about something like climate change and say we pretend that the economy is working for every single person, which is absolutely insane. But even if we take that, just climate change is a unmitigated catastrophe that we are looking down the barrel of. We simply like, there, there's no more time to just pretend like things are normal and things are fine. Yep. And it drives me crazy when people are just like, well, I just want things to go back to normal. And it's like, they were never fucking normal. It was never normal. <laughs> it was never normal. Maybe it was for you, but the rest of the fucking country and the rest of the fucking world is having a terrible time. Yeah, and, and it's really yeah. interesting to me how, like, um, I mean, especially in the um, in this sort of follow up to the last right. financial financial crisis, the housing crisis that we had <laughs> in like two thousand eight, yeah. two thousand twelve, through that era, like it was interesting and and horrifying to see in real time people come to grips with the fact that they aren't in the club that these promise yeah. especially millennials like i think millennials yeah. got it faster but you even see this um people who were doing okay they might have been poor i mean i grew up pretty poor but there were certain things that we that we had as a benefit of like the society mm -hmm. functioning to some level of what we could call normalcy a lot of evaporated suffering. overnight and it just disappears and disappears and until people realize like oh it's not gonna come back for me it might no. come back for Pelosi or it might come back for one of the Bezos's kids or something like that. But mm -hmm. for the rest of us, the idea that we're ever like, here's one, here's one that always gets people is mm -hmm. when, when was the last time any, anybody who's like my age, like 30, if you're a millennial, when was the last time hey, you hey, thought hey, there was a real chance of you getting a house someday? Uh, I, I ironic because I actually been saving money for the past ages to yeah. get a house. <laughs> yeah. And it's been forever. And, and you look right. back at like our parents and it's like, oh, like I remember my parents were just like, oh yeah, we can get a loan for a house like on our, yeah, no on problem. our job that we have. And it's just like, what the fuck? It's like almost laughable. It's almost laughable. And it's, so it's like, it's one of those yeah. things where again, there's all these points where people can realize like, oh shit, like this system lied to us. This system sold us a lie and we need to change it and we have yep. to do it ourselves. We can't expect Joe Biden to do it because it's working for Joe Biden. Sure. Right, it's why, working why for a handful it? of people. Why would he change it? What's that? Right? And I said, why would he change yeah, it? Yeah, why would it's he? Yeah, exactly. Why? It's working for him. And I, yeah, I think the, the financial collapse was the first time a lot of people our age started realizing that everything that they have been told ever since they were a kid was, you know, was, was bullshit. Yeah. Right? Like yep. the town I grew up in and live in there was one neighborhood where two out of three houses were foreclosed i remember Christ. in 2009 just driving through downtown and there was just un unattended building after unattended building it was boarded up you know like every once in a while you'd see somebody squatting peeking out through behind the boards and that was the entirety of the downtown yep. and still a lot of the city hasn't recovered i mean a lot of places have not recovered you know, African-American families lost the majority of their wealth that they had built. Equity yep. was most of the wealth that working class and middle class families had. And poof, it's gone, gone. overnight. Overnight. Right. Yep. And, and, the and entire, through no, through no action of their own, mind exactly. you. Exactly. They were doing exactly. everything no, no that they were supposed to do. 
mm -hmm. and, right? and this has been experienced. Yeah, a uh, retcon in my chat just said, my girlfriend is a, is a scientist in a top rated lab uh, oh, and I happen to know the lab, a world famous lab with, and I have five years of security management experience and there's no way we can get a house. Isn't that absurd that you can have two people working like experienced, what should be high paying jobs in modern America. And you can't even right. think about getting a house. It, it's un, it's unthinkable. It's unattainable for most people. Yet and, there's I mean, lots of houses out there. They're right? everywhere. They're just everywhere. really high price, and you gotta start I, I asking questions. I wonder who's fucking buying them. Because right. when I was, because I started looking at like finding like a cheap house mm -hmm. since I had saved money for, for like a decade for yeah. it, maybe more. And I I'm definitely not gonna be able to afford it on my own. But that's why my sisters also saved money. Yeah, yeah. But um, who's fucking buying these houses? Yep. I look at something that's cheap. The next literally the same day it's who's fucking buying houses yep. who are these people hey cf cheese thank you so very much for the yeah, dono really like appreciate that channel. incredibly generous thank you um happy to have you i hope you have a good time um as far as who's buying them it's really it's really funny because if you start to dig into that you'll find out mm -hmm. that it's corporations that are buying them they're buying these the houses me. and they're either holding on to them so they can do a, a neighborhood project, a neighborhood gentrification project, mm -hmm. you know, where they buy a bunch of failing properties, demolish the buildings, invest some of their cap their infinite capital, and then they're mm -hmm. able to sell them to somebody like some, you know, rich, pe rich tech people who right. are coming in the area, something along those lines. Or they're being turned into, um, they're being turned into, um, what's it called? Air, Airbnb, Airbnb. Air, They're being turned. Yeah. If you go to San Francisco, it's actually fucking. It's actually hog wild. <laughs> there is just like, everything's an Airbnb. Yeah, everything's an Airbnb. There's just places that are just empty all the time, and you can tell nobody's living in them. It's just an Airbnb, and the only reason they're able to do this is because, well. The goal is to, and of course, this is not working so great for people under uh, under the COVID conditions, but previously, they could appeal to a international pool of the 1% who could occasionally come in and rent these houses at a ridiculous rate, a rate that's so high that it justifies leaving them empty the rest of the time. And it not that fucked? How fucked is that, that we're in a position where there are there are more homeless people than we've seen in, in, in ages, and yet there's more empty houses than we've seen in ages at the same time? Uh, muted. It's you're absolutely muted. in- Yeah, there you go. You're good, you're you good. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I okay. can now. Yep. Yeah, it just creates these absolutely insane excesses where, like, there was that article going around the beginning of COVID when people were starting to go hungry, where they were destroying hundreds of tons of potatoes because they couldn't find any buyers. Yep. Right? And it's it's this absolutely insane. And it always it always cracks me up, of course. I'm sure you too, when people are like, well, it's an efficient way to distribute resources. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? They spent hundreds of million dollars on the fucking emoji movie. Who saw that? And people are starving and yeah. people are homeless and deprived. And these goods are not going where they are needed because society prioritizes profit over need and and you know that's the basic thing that all left-leaning all socialists all anarchists can agree on that society needs to be structured around production for need not exactly profit. like we have what we have right now and this is another thing i i harp on a lot people probably get a little bored of it but maybe not is is talking about how uh profit incentive structures are just <laughs> so fundamentally bad for a functional planet like yeah. oh yeah like they're good for a couple of things for sure um like for example they're really good if um if you want to have like a hundred different um luxury bags like types of luxury bags all of which are functionally um indistinguishable and stylistically uh -huh. often uh -huh. stylistically indistinguishable as well but uh but but play into a culture of sort of conspicuous consumption but right. but other than that other than this sort of like like literal uh pantomime of of endless uh conspicuous right. consumptivism of just like oh yeah other than that the profit other motive that, doesn't work it just doesn't right. do what we want it to do it doesn't give us the medicine we need it doesn't give us it doesn't give the the bulk of us comfortable lives it doesn't actually inspire people to innovate all of these things that we're told no. about this system of capitalism are just flat out false yeah it's it's all bullshit and but hey, you know, didn't you see that picture from uh, the grocery store in Cuba where they all oh, had yeah. the same brand of beans? Oh yeah. I mean, 
I mean, you're not really free unless you can choose 20 different types of canned beans, right? Yeah. Well, and it's funny, too, because I find that people, like, people make this, like, I I've seen this before. I've seen this sort of, like, um, oh, well, you know, we're going to have to get rid of, like, luxury goods under, like, a socialistic <laughs> system or a communistic oh, no. system. And I'm just like, well, first of all, yeah, uh, that's really sad. I'm sorry that uh, that we'll have to get rid of the luxury Gucci bags in exchange so to sorry. not have people dying in the street. But at the same time, you also can go, but hold on a minute. No, we don't. Jeff yeah, Bezos is sitting on 800 bajillion dollars. Eight, he's like at eight eight seventy billion or something right now. This dude's sitting on $870 billion. You redistribute that fairly? Guess what? We're going to still have stores full of interesting products that people are making for a, a normal price and people can have the quality of life. You just can't give $870 billion to one dude. You can't do right. that. That's not a working system. I mean, you get into that issue, though, with, with market systems. Like, if, if you want to have some sort of market system in general, like, it needs to be insanely constrained because otherwise you're always going to end up in the situation. That's just how capital accumulates, where it's always going to end up having one person. We've done this fucking thing before. Like, everything we're going through right hap now happened in the Lochner era, happened in the Gilded Age in the United yep. States. And then they put regulations in place, and then they got rid of those regulations, and then the same thing fucking happened again. It's not surprising. Yeah, this is a cycle, and um, one of the yep, things that a one of the one. yeah it is one of the um, one of the uh, sort of um, one of the one of the segments I, I I did a bit earlier before we got into all this election bullshit that's been going on was uh, I did a are you familiar with the Battle of Blair Mountain? I'm sure you are. Are you familiar of with the, course. Yeah, of, of course. course. Of course. Um, I did a segment on that, and one of the things I'm really, oh, right on. yeah, one of the things I'm really interested in doing going forward is having, um, you know, I'm going to try and do segments where we talk about uh, the economic and labor history of the United States because a lot of people oh. are never taught these things, and well, it's hey, fascinating. Guys, and if you know where to look, you can find these stories. You can, like, I mean, it's not hard to find it. I mean, most of my sources were very easily accessible. It's just, it's never actually given to people. So people don't know it's there. And, and we've done this stuff before. We've been at this almost exact place a hundred years ago. We've, yep. we've done that. These battles have been fought and won by labor to a certain degree in the past. And what has been, you know, what has sort of been used to perpetuate these, this boom and bust, mm -hmm. which again, doesn't benefit the vast majority of people. It only benefits a select group of people, right. the people who are the heirs or inheritors mm -hmm. or beneficiaries of and the top of the design. corporation. Yeah, it's by design. design. Like, I, I believe it was one of the Rockefellers who said that uh, in an economic crisis, assets return to whom they rightfully belong, us. And it's the same sort of thing he said. If they knew how we, if the workers knew what really goes on, they would kill us by the morning. And, and you know, these it's not a new thing. The right. wealthy have understood this for years. I mean, and that's what I always so funny when, like, especially middle class people or pundits or whatever, like, oh, we, we can't, this is class war. We can't have class war. Well, they've been fucking waging class war for hundreds of years. And guess what? They just told you they weren't. And you're fucking losing. Do you want to know what, and, and this is more addressed to chat. Chat, do you want to know what class war looks like? Class war? looks like 250,000 dead working class Americans yep. while uh, while Governor Cuomo and Lindsey Graham and Donald Trump fly around on their private jets and tell you that you're, it's your fault that you're dying, that you should have skipped out on that cheesecake. Mm -hmm. That's what class war looks like. That was fucking insane. The Isn't that fucked? Line. Yeah, and I, you know what fucking looks like class war? Hundreds of people waiting in line in their cars at a food bank or people dying because they can't access health care. That's fucking class war and it's been going on for a long time. I mean, that's the end goal. They don't they don't care about us. Workers are only useful insofar as they generate profit. And it is always useful to the capitalist class to have the severely impoverished, to have homeless, of to have un underemployed people, because that creates a permanent pool of labor that can then be used to create a downward pressure on wages. Because it's absolutely scabs, right? You know, if somebody is always more desperate than you and willing to do the same thing for less, it's always going to create a downward pressure on wages. And that's exactly what they fucking want. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and here's the funny thing, like, um, this isn't even like, this isn't even 
behind closed doors that they do this. Oh, our they're explicit. Yeah, our government includes a certain acceptable percentage of unemployment in its calculations of like a healthy GDP. They yep. build your suffering, or maybe not it's you this not time, but they build a certain percentage of the society is going to be suffering, is going to be unemployed into the models. And oh, I, yeah. while I oh, recognize yeah. that obviously not all of that is meant to be permanent unemployment, it often is. It often is. Well, at a certain point, too, when people have been unemployed for a certain period of time, they strike them from the rolls and, and they're they're no longer unemployed. They're simply not seeking work. Yes. And and that's how they can also keep those numbers artificially lower than they actually well, are. Well, that's what's happened right. with the gig economy stuff, too, because so many right. people are working gig economy and it, mm -hmm. it's it's disgustingly low wages. Some people don't even can't even cover their bills with can't, it. Can't even fucking break even. Yeah. And, and you know, for the depth. De uh, depreciation on the car and their loan and gas and all of that and it, it's it's a racket it it's not a break even it's intentionally there to just keep these people working as hard as possible like prop 22 in california they made it so it's basically oh it's neo-feudal now unless you get every single seven eighths of the legislature in california to overturn it and guess what even if you had eight eighths uber's gonna come in and pay two jackasses half a million dollars to say no and it's never being repealed. This is your future now. Yep. And, it, and, unless, and I mean, you know, they just we said. organize and fight back. Yeah. Well, that's the key. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. There's many ways to organize. Yeah. Prop and, 22. Uh, yeah. Uh, Prop Uber 22. Lit. Yep. The yep. Uber one. Yeah, exactly. That's the one. Um, I mean, and think about this. Like, just so you, just so everyone in chat who's unfamiliar with how bad mm -hmm. the Prop 22 stuff got. Um, oh, that's right, Sansi. Just so you know, um, just so you know, in, in California, um, Uber and Lyft were uh, were putting in their app advertisements to vote on Prop 22, and <laughs> you had sure to what? click through them and agree, like go, yeah, yeah, okay, this is good. Yes. You had to do that in order yes. to get a ride on Uber and Lyft. Now, keep in mind, you might mm -hmm. go, well, why don't you just use another service? Because there's not any other services anymore. Uber and Lyft put the taxis out of business by and large. And the drivers had to do it too. Yep. The drivers were constantly inundated with propaganda to the point that a lot of drivers believed that when they were voting yes on Prop 22, they were voting for them to get benefits. Yep. And it's, you know, the same thing. There was a classic example where they did this, where California, a lot of places, has a progressive voters guide. I'm sure it's probably put out by the Justice Democrats or something like that. Yeah. And Uber and Lyft, their lobbying firm, put out an exact replica of it with all the same things but the only exception was yes on 22 and at the very bottom there's tiny little small print saying it was funded by this pack but otherwise if you weren't paying attention it looked like it came from the progressive voters guide fuck that's so bad and I so know, much right? of this yeah i didn't even hear about that particular one i i knew of the the in-app one and i also know that uber eats and um What's the other one? DoorDash? Uber Eats DoorDash. and DoorDash both were requiring their employees to put pro Prop 22 flyers in each bag of food. And, <laughs> and just I just want you to think about that. If you just were working, if you're just grinding away at your job, yeah. you're putting in something that's fucking you without ever knowing that you're doing that. And they make that a How part of your insane. job. It's insane. It's, 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 it's you know, so funny in that this the dystopia that we are living in, if you were to try to imagine this 20 30 years ago it's so insane it, like it's it simply would be unimaginable to someone 20 years ago that all the all the terrible dystopic things that we're having right now uh, the, the closest i've seen to getting to this have you seen the movie chopping mall no i haven't actually uh, it's a great cult movie basically they put a robot security guard in the mall and then it just malfunctions and murders everyone because Incredible. they're not supposed to be there because they're infringing on property rights. And that's the closest I've seen. <sighs> Sounds like an ANCAP wonderland. Are. Right, right. Yeah. You are not generating profit. Please die. Yeah, it it, it always makes me um it always makes me a bit a bit sad um at the state of of and and maybe this is you know this is a little bit more um abstract but. Work culture in America makes me sad. It makes me sad because what I oh, see yeah. is, I mean, literally people that I like almost everyone I know, whether they have spent a lot of time working for a corporation or not, is inundated mm -hmm. with this constant dread or pressure that they're not productive enough. 
that they're not right. this and that there there's Your there's a moral element yeah there's a moral element to it and yeah. And it makes me sad because it's like, and I felt this obviously myself. This is something I dealt with. Like I am like literally dealt with workaholism at one point in my life. And like, yeah, I, you and me both. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I think a lot of people do. I think most Americans are, and whether they know it or not, workaholics. Mm -hmm. And this idea that like, that everything you do needs to be commodified, that everything you do needs right, to be exchange. productive somehow. And that we have to justify, I, I even find this myself, like, um, justifying activities that I do based on their productivity, even if they're just for myself, right? You, I'm sure many people right. in the audience feel that, that. That voice is in your brain now. Yeah. And I, I have a, a good sort of example on that. It's it's basically, also, are you familiar with, like, you know, the, the Marxist term, like, base and superstructure, that sort mm -hmm. of central idea? Yes, absolutely. Right, you know, well, the, the idea of the superstructure, the ideological apparatuses that are built by society are to reinforce the mode of production and make it seem necessary and justified and you know it's really well doing really well when it gets into people's head and emerges as their own spontaneous thought so i worked at the sales company i've done sales for 10 years uh, i've been a sales manager i've run sales teams and stuff like that mm -hmm. and the last place i worked the entire culture was just workaholic just yep. non-stop it, it I, I could give you plenty of examples but it was insane i was working 70 hours a week doing sales at this place and if you didn't work on your weekends even though they weren't allowed to legally compel you everybody treated you like a pariah yep and you, because know, you were lazy or whatever exactly and it's yeah. the system where even though i was supposed to be in the office at 11 o'clock if i wasn't in there at eight i got criticized or i had privileges revoked or i got worse leads yeah. And it's the system where it's none of it's legal, but it creates this sort of ideological apparatus within the workplace where everyone Absolutely. is working themselves to the bone. And the sales reps aren't making that much more money from it, but the boss is. My boss was making half a million dollars a year running this one office. Yeah, I mean, work stories, it's really funny. Uh, there's this really great video by, um, are you familiar with Radical Reviewer on YouTube? No, no okay. I'm, see, I'm not big into YouTube channels. I there don't know much. You know, I'm I'm new to this. Well, I'll right? give you I'll get I'll hook you up with some good ones. Okay. Radical reviewer is great. Okay. Radical reviewer, um, big big fan. Um, they do videos. Basically, they do what 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 are functionally video book reviews of different like theory or economic theory. Um, oh, you know, philosophy, all all lefty focused. And they did one video that was or two videos that were called how my work radicalized me and mm. that i love that series okay. because it talks about people's experience um like it, it talks it, it speaks very much at least to my experience and, and in my and apparently the video did very well so i imagine it speaks to a lot of people's experience right. of, of of going to a job and like putting your all into something and then realizing just how much the entire thing is designed to squeeze out everything that they can yep. get from you without giving you anything for it Exactly. They get everything from you. They get your life. They get your dedication. They get your youth. And in exchange, you get a fraction of the value that yep. you generate. And I think it's always a good example when people don't understand what you're talking about. Be like, you know, do a simple experiment. Think about a barista at Starbucks, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to do the math right because I'm a, I'm a himbo. But, you know, it's, think about the cost of a latte. Say it's yeah. $5 per coffee. This person serves 20, 20 coffees an hour. Even after you subtract rent and resource costs and all of that, this person's getting paid $10 an hour, maybe, at best. Where does the rest of that fucking money go? And if you kind of frame it that way to people, I remember someone saying to me, well, I don't like socialism because I don't like the idea of people not working, getting money. And I'm like, wait, hold on. Think about it a second. Do you think Jeff Bezos is working million, billions of times harder than you? And he's like, no. What do, what do you think about people that run hedge funds? Well, they're not doing much. Exactly. You're thinking of fucking capitalism and the greatest trick the devil's ever pulled, you know, that whole thing is basically convincing workers that everything that they think they hate about socialism is what they experience on a fucking daily basis. Yeah. And it's, it's really interesting. Like I, I, oh God, I could talk about, again, I could talk about work stories forever, you um, can do me but, both. but something that, something that people don't realize uh, I think a lot of the time is how um, authoritarian and autocratic the the spaces they spend most of their time um, yeah. in are and and, and tyrants. yeah and even if we even if 
you can't appeal to somebody on like the, the this sort of like hey like you realize like you're not getting because of course, a lot of the function of, of capitalism in the, in the current day relies on ignorance. It relies on, uh, and that's not to insult people who are, are fooled by it. The human brain struggles with really big numbers. It's hard to imagine how much, uh, I think I was wrong about the figure before. I think uh, B Jeff Bezos has $183.5 billion net worth right now, and who knows how much holdings and whatnot. Right. Um, but that that's amount meaning. of money is so massive. Like people don't understand. So when 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 they're told, um, um, when they're told that like, um, you know, uh, yeah, the, if if we if we lowered the cost of the coffee, if we increased the the price of 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 uh, of, of hourly pay, oh, it would put us out of business. They go, oh, oh may, well. maybe. I mean, but people rightfully they kind of go and they try to do the mental math. They're like, okay, that kind of makes sense. And then there's these assumptions that are just like brushed over. Meanwhile, you have uh, at the top of this company, you know, ten people like Starbucks, for example. I mean, the guy literally funded his own fucking presidential campaign and still has money to spare. You know, the same thing goes for Bloomberg. Bloomberg is so unfathomably rich that people can't even imagine that he can literally, here's how much money it is. They say, oh, we, if, if, if we have to pay our workers, then it's going to put the company out of business. Meanwhile, Bloomberg, for example, or what's his name? The guy, the Howard, Howard guy, Howard Schultz, Howard Schultz, the guy who runs Starbucks can literally hire an entire campaign apparatus at whatever price overnight. he needs to. What's that? I said overnight. Just overnight. Just his fingers. He has a campaign apparatus. Yep. And you know that that line will go out of business. Two points on that. It, it's hilarious. But that's the same fucking line they have been saying to people since the 1900s. If we get yep. rid of child labor, we simply can't afford it. We will go out of business. If we implement working hours, if we implement overtime, if we implement safety regulations, they've been saying the same fucking thing for forever and it's never true but even if their assumption was true the counterpoint to that's quite simple okay well, well why do you think then that is a good or fair economic system where paying people the amount of money necessary for them to live their lives comfortably for the work they do is will put the company out of business well yeah. that doesn't make any fucking sense as a structure who came up with that and, and you know it's yeah. not true it's a lie yeah it's a lie it's a lie and they they base on they base you know, they know this and this is pushed knowing that people aren't going to be able to do the mental math to figure out that if a company can support uh, like 20 executive, you know, executive positions being paid millions of dollars a year, then wait, actually, yeah, they could afford to pay their wor their workers who are actually generating the value more. Um, and yeah, and it, but right. instead, most workplaces are, you know, not only are they disgustingly under like are the workers in those places disgustingly under um underpaid and not given benefits and whatever but they're also not even given the freedom of uh, or they're not even given freedom or dignity they're just expected to just suck it up whatever i mean i remember like one of the, what's that be machines yeah like be machines amazon like their piss breaks being time they're not even granted the dignity of pissing in peace like they're, yeah. they're not people they are simply cogs in a machine that are to be used until they are worn and broken and then discarded and replaced yep. and that's it there's no humanity yeah there's no humanity involved in it um yeah it's it's terrible um now uh let's i want to real quick just uh just switch over to a slightly different topic Sure, um, whatever because, the hell you want to do. Yeah, there's I'm, at I'm least here to hang out. Yeah, yeah. Um I got a, I got a bit more time before I got to do my next next, next segment, but I wanted mm -hmm. to um I wanted to talk to you about the current situation of politics in the United okay. States, specifically cool. with regard to like the election and stuff. Um okay. because I this has been something we've been talking about on this channel um quite a bit and it's, it, it seems to be a point of, of contention from a lot of different camps. So what do you, what do you, what are your thoughts? I just, I guess you could just give me your raw thoughts on what are your thoughts about like Trump's actions post election? Where do you think he's going to go from here? What is your theory? Do you have a game theory? Cause I've got mine and I can give yeah, you mine afterwards, but I'd like to hear yours. Theory. Um, yeah. Hold on. I'm just trying to pull up your chat, your live stream chat so people can see it on my stream. Well, what specifically? What specifically? Just yeah. in general? So do you what what do you think of the whole what do you think of the whole like uh calling it a coup? What do you think of the of the doubting of the election results? That sort of okay. stuff. Okay. So I 
I mean, I basically think as far I'll start with the coup point, right? Yep. Um, it's sort of the logic that they clearly would like to do a coup d'etat. Mm -hmm. I think that's they've made that pretty clear. And one of the things about Constitution and the structure of the Constitution is that most of these things are on paper only. There really is no actual physical or institutional barrier to doing a coup because everything is based off norms. And even if there is a Supreme Court ruling, who the fuck's going to enforce it? However, that being said, the Trump administration is not good at thinking forward. They are yeah. not good at planning ahead, which has been very clear with coronavirus. To the their ideological commitments and their dumbass beliefs are more important than any sense of uh, efficient application or execution of their desires, with the exception of Stephen Miller. So I think they have gone and pissed off just about everyone they would need for a coup to be successful. Yeah. The military, the leadership of the military does not like them. And I think that's the reason you're seeing uh, him try to fire as many people as possible yeah. and replace them with loyalists. The, the foot soldiers, most of them don't like them. The officers don't like him. So as far as a military coup, I, I think he does want to do a coup, but I don't think he'll be able to actually execute it. Yeah. Like, you know, um, maybe he does stay in power. I think if the if the Republicans all actually form a unified front, especially in the Senate, uh, he might be able to stay in power somehow. But I, I just I just don't see it likely outside of a judicial coup through yeah. basically um, federal justices throwing out election results and then it never making it to the Supreme Court. I, I could see it happening that way, but yeah. that's, that's about it. What, what do you think? What's your what's your matter yeah. on all this? Um, I mean, I've been I've had a lot of things, uh, a lot of thoughts about this that, you know, like m my concern, of course, is that uh, oh, like, and I don't think the, was... chat real quick. Uh, oh, they, the executive is allowed to stop enforcing stuff. So they, they can just stop enforcing things if they want. And that's happened tons of times before. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so my thoughts on this is like, I don't, I don't think there's any, like he's got a shot in hell of any sort of like proper, like what we would imagine of like a historical military coup. I don't think that's like viable. What I do, what I am worried about is um, them being able to hold on long enough to find a panic, um, if that makes sense. Um, so like they can, he could sit on his hands and wait in the white house and doubt the election, continue to undermine the idea of legitimacy and keep in mind, again, this comes from a position of someone who's very, very critical of American democracy. But what we're talking about with Donald Trump is literally like throwing democ all sense of democracy, all aspirations of democracy out the window in the name well, of, of a, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what would happen. And exactly. That, that's, and that's sort of. Uh, the calculus is figuring out, OK, well, do enough of the Republican leadership and enough of these federal judges and enough of these people and enforcement agencies under the executive DEA, ATF, ICE, Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. Do these people because fortunately, some of these guys are Sorkin brained yeah, and yeah, they're yeah. like, you know, like Comey, they're like the biggest honor is serving your country. Shut the fuck up. But, you know, <laughs> a lot of these people um, are like that. And, you know, he's purging those sorts of yeah, he is. brain boilers. But, you know, it's sort of, are they going to say that it is better for their, because people like McConnell, they are only concerned about protecting the interests of the ruling class and enforcing their ideological agenda. And that's, I think, part of the reason McConnell was one of the first people to kind of be like, oh, congratulations, Mr. Biden, because yeah. he realized he's got everything he wanted out of Trump for the most part. And yeah. I think it's actually, he realizes a, a weak Biden victory with uh, people not, you know, fully recognizing the election results, people doubting it, um, and then a Senate controlled by the Republicans, a weak Biden, nothing's going to get done. The economy is going to fucking crash and burn. More people are going to die from COVID. They're never going to do a mass mandate, anything like that. And then 2022, Republicans gain even more power because yeah. they've managed to completely derail everything. But I don't think a coup is out of the question. I mean, he could certainly continue doubting the election until yeah. we start seeing an uptick in violence and then he could declare martial law. Yeah, and see, that's the sort of thing. I don't even know if it would be necessary for him to do something that drastic. My concern is that he, uh, we keep seeing these sort of outbursts like what happened at the Million MAGA March where the, the Proud Boys show up and cause a bunch of shit. Maybe they get more targeted at it. I know that the Oath Keepers have been uh, have been talking a whole bunch lately about, about uh, you know, 
going after specific politicians and journalists and stuff like that. And if that was to happen, I think it's possible that the more establishment types like Mitch, the like, the like, you know, prim proper, I want to have the fascist in a suit types might get spooked into saying, oh, this is an existential issue even for us. So we mm-hmm. got to double down and go behind Donald Trump. And that's my concern. I don't even know. I don't know how I would analyze the chances of that at this point, given how chaotic it's been. But it is weird to me to see – it is very concerning to me to see Donald Trump doing internal purges of high positions in the Department of Defense in, right. in you know, these yeah. and, and also getting support from people like Lindsey Graham um, and and pushing this so far as to say, oh, we're going to try and invalidate entire counties of ballots in Georgia. Um, we're going to use the president's uh, platform on every social media site to push OANN and 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 all of these fucking, you know, far right conspiracy theory websites as official news sources from the pulpit of the president it's so concerning to me and so i don't know it's very hard for me to 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 say where they're gonna go i mean of course there's a part of me that would like to say that like oh sure he's gonna get dragged out but what we've actually seen so far is that donald trump has had this weird ability to completely spoil any institutional action against him because he's mm-hmm. so blunt yeah. and so rapid and so blatantly disgustingly yeah. corrupt that like yeah. he just knocks him aside so i do worry that there's some chance that he'll just brush aside these 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 norms and 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 handshake well, agreements he's already and whatnot. Brushed, brushed aside all the norms i mean he's refused to you know concede the election and all that and that's kind of what i was talking about earlier is that the way especially with supreme court decisions that's granted more power to the executive basically all the barriers to anything the executive does are on paper i mean like if you think about like the torture memo with john Yoo back during the bush years um basically that he was forced bush was forced to sign into effect a law congress passed banning torture and then you know what he did he put a signing statement on it saying oh by the way cia ignore this it's not really a law and yeah. you know no one could stop him and that's the sort of the thing the executive are you familiar with, like unitary executive theory um not by the term but i probably am familiar with the concept right you it's, can it's give it to me thing. yeah it's what yeah. bush espouses and bill barr um basically the idea is that unlike the traditional separation of powers the executive is sort of the sovereign you know yeah. the unquestioned sovereign and that congress okay. does not have a right to subpoena or anything like that or limit them in any way and right. the court does not have the right to judicial review so they can't over it's authoritarianism know, yeah it's authoritarianism the only checks are impeachment or, or election Which but failed. if you don't <laughs> right 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 and so there's no checks and bill barr ironically was so committed to unitary executive theory that back during the bush years cheney at all rumsfeld had to tell him the coolest fucking jets yeah yeah well i mean we're gonna find out i guess bill barr the uh, christian dominionist yep. uh being in charge mm-hmm. of the justice department is truly truly concerning um and uh yeah i mean we've certainly seen sort of a a um we, we've seen a, a cer- certainly a trend towards hard authoritarianism under trump um that wasn't even present that the same to the same degree um at least Again, and of course, the the big giant, the giant asterisk on this is, of course, domestically. Obviously, George Bush was a fucking authoritarian monster on the global stage. Um, But yeah, uh, but 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 as far as um, as as far as domestically, we've seen Donald Trump go full like full hog. I mean, everything from saying, oh, yeah, I hope the police treat them even worse to, you know, ordering the execution of Michael Reinowl. Um, right. which is something we got to talk about at some point yeah, on my that, stream that, again. That, but. That's insane. And like chat was saying, you know, like uh, Trump never really jokes. Right. Yeah. And then whenever someone tries to give him an out by like, oh, he was just joking about uh, going around and murdering every cat in this town. He was like, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And, you know, it's the, the really the question comes down to Trump is going to try to remain in power by any means available to him. Yeah. It The question is will he be able to pull it off and thankfully they are very incompetent his administration is now a lot of the rats have left the ship if you've been following like the court cases that giuliani's been arguing yes. oh god i fucking love we're gonna be talking giuliani. about that after yes yeah. we're there like the 
um, he was reading the complaint and he's like, opacity. I don't know what opacity means. I think it means you can see. And the judge is like, it means you can't see. And he's like, okay. Well, anyways, yeah. you know, like they're losing these cases one after another. Yeah, they're so, like one for 25 right now. Right. And, and yeah. eventually only more desperate and radical options are going to be available to them. And it's really, are they going to go all in? Are they going to have the backing from other people to pull that off? But yeah. You know, we'll, time will tell. I have fu no fucking clue. I'm not that much smarter than any random person you meet on the street, so I don't fucking know. I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is it's going to be uh, shitty. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Um, <laughs> it's going to suck. True. Um, one thing I will say, though, is that one of what seems to be a absolute sort of um, linchpin in the in – the, strategy that donald trump is going for um right now is pushing these these conspiracy theory uh largely online things like like oann things like you know and retweeting andy Mio, um pushing all these far right <laughs> yeah like all these far right demagogues and i think that puts us as creators in a unique position because we are like it or not the ex the currently existing answer to these unchecked online demagogues that like we sucks, really are right? it's a little that, scary but it's kind of like true the last line there uh, yeah. outside of community organizations that, well, of like, course like yeah, but, like, but like, i mean just on this front this yeah yeah we have to counter it i mean like you know if, the, if people like us aren't out there you know breaking down Tim Poole's statements or Andy No showing where he's lying and all that. And granted, it's not going to matter to a lot of his audience. Yeah. But, you know, it's what they say. Uh, what's that old expression? It kind of sucks, but, you know, a lie gets around the world before the truth gets its pants on. Yeah. Right? You know, that sort of thing. And it is hard to counter that kind of stuff. Yeah. But if no one's doing it and it's completely unchallenged, what's the alternative? Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why I encourage – uh, and and I also personally uh, take a a a interest in um, in getting effective online, getting effective with both my communication, um, with my presentation, with how I utilize SEO, how I utilize you know my own marketing of my show. The reason why I think that's important is because I it think is. we do need to get as many lefty voices as we possibly can. Right. out there to counter this oh. narrative because if right. there's no counter it's gonna spread it's gonna yeah. spread like wildfire and of right. course there's all kinds of other things to do i of course uh talk about mutual it's aid and percentage. organization on here all the time but just within the scope of of the the information online the information war there yeah, yeah there is an information to, uh, war. make me your pupil and teach me your ways sensei. I'll do my best. teach me your seo and self-marketing <laughs> i can hmm. teach you well the one I, thing i, I can teach you now ninja is yes. is i could teach you the twitter code uh mm. which my my chat will will love to go along with this posting feet? what's that no you don't well you can't do that post, oh that's yeah. right you never post feet you can you, post you feet. That. it's fine let me just okay. tell you let me give you the the rules and my chat is going to get in here yet okay, people are saying nips, nips but nips but you guys want some nips no, i'll no. give you some nips <laughs> No, they're saying Somebody the code is – some people want to call our, our – okay, there's this thing. Uh, in Vosh's community, there was a thing that was called the cum pledge. And um, the cum oh, pledge was like – yeah. <laughs> It was very funny. But um, the the but the cum pledge is a little bit different than the, the Twitter code that I have, which – Hey, there we got it. And I'm on What's YouTube. You sick freaks? Yeah, listen, I'm on YouTube. I'm safe. You better be careful with that on Twitch. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> listen, um, but uh, but uh, let me give you the Twitter code because it is different than the uh, than the aforementioned cum pledge. But let me give you the rules. All right, number one, this is how I want the left to get good at Twitter because Twitter is where, believe it or not, there are a lot of people on Twitter, and the narratives are not in our favor right now. They have like bot armies and all kinds of shit, and I think we can actually win on Twitter. So. Number one, rule number one, do not discourse. And I know, now that sounds like it's going to be a little like counterintuitive, but discourse on Twitter is busted as fuck. It's completely busted and it only leads to suffering. Whenever people discourse on Twitter, it leads discourse to great suffering. 
Like it's like a version of Buddhism. Yes. Hey, Chris, thank you so much hey, for the Satan. for the dono. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So number one is D and D. Do not discourse. And the reason for that, of course, is because Twitter breaks discourse. It leads to all kinds of what we uh, sometimes lovingly refer to as lefty infighting. But it usually just that. leads to chaos and madness and anger and frustration. And also looks really bad because people who don't necessarily know have no fucking clue what's going on in these conversations. So you can express your political opinions online. If you, got, if you can concisely explain your opinion in a tweet or two tweets, go for it. Just don't discourse. If people want to argue with you, talk to them on your show. Talk to them on your Discord. Talk to them anywhere else except for Twitter. Do not discourse on Twitter. Then, rule number two. Uh, and the first rule is the only do not. All the others are do. So number two, meme and cream. Meme and cream. The cream in part... Well, you already posted feet, so you got the cream and fart. The cream and fart okay. done. So, uh, ludes. Uh, yeah, if you want to, if you want to enjoy it, enjoy the the, the the incredible selection of adult content that's available on Twitter. Enjoy it. Enjoy it yourself. Um, number two is meme and cream. Oh yeah. Also, you could join yeah. my uh, my pure memes and creams uh, community oh, that was made for me yeah. on um, yeah. Reddit.com slash our okay, okay buddy mama if you want to okay, okay buddy mama <laughs> it's All nonsense right, okay. it's not nonsense we, we esoteric nonsense. memes but it's very fun um the, the the memeing and the creaming memes are great on twitter twitter blasts you, you can get memes everywhere on twitter they spread easily they're fun everybody has a good time you let's can, post you can some memes. yeah let's post some fucking memes memes and creams rule number three for twitter is promote your content and other people's content twitter is an ad platform, like it or not. Mm -hmm. You should use it as such because it will promote that stuff, except for the fact that it, for some reason, suppresses outbound links, but we'll get to that at a later point. Mm -hmm. okay. Promote yours and other people's content. You will always have a good time doing that. And for and rule number four, dunk on your abject enemies. Let's fucking go. Let's yeah, dunk. That's the fun one. Dunk on people that you hate. Rudy Giuliani, fucking go for it. Donald Trump, go for Let's it. Dave it. Rubin, go for it. You got a you got a, a, a right wing chud that you're fighting with? Dunk on him. Go for it. Just don't discourse. And the reason why there's a difference there is because discourse is what you do with people that you care about. You have a conversation with them. And if you don't care about them, if you if they're your enemy, have fun. Make it a meme for your audience. So those are the rules. Number one, do not discourse. Number two, meme and cream. Number three, promote. And number four, dunk on your abject enemies. And if you do that, I always tell people, not only will you have a better time on Twitter personally, you will up your Twitter game as well because your timeline will be way more tolerable to people. You'll have much yeah. better re reach and you won't be going nuts ripping your hair out because you're arguing with 200 people about this week's topic of the week, which could be anything from necrophilia <laughs> to oh God. whether or Why not. Why does necrophilia come up every four months? It always, somebody posts it and then it, oh, every four months. Like just saying, work. just saying, just saying. So either that or whether it's some obscure argument over a random historical figure as to whether they were or good or bad, report. all that sort of thing. There you go. That's those are the rules, and that's my code that I've been uh, that I've been sharing with as many lefties okay, as possible. Right. And I think it will help the left get better at Twitter. And maybe there will be room for improvement in the future. But for now, that's it. So see, there you go. That's that's People part of the thing I believe in. Crack open a cold one with the boys. That's right. That's yeah, right. yeah. There you go. <laughs> crack, cracking open a bear. Oh, I lost you there. You're you're muted for a second. Muted. You're muted. You're muted. Am I still muted? Yeah, you muted for a second there. Oh, so sad. You're all good. You're all good. So, uh, yeah. So this has been a great conversation. Um, we're at about yeah. the one and a half hour mark. Oh, so, time flies. Yeah, time flies. It's a fucking great conversation. Um, yeah, thank you for having me on. Of course. Um, and here's what I'm going to do. I need to hit the restroom real quick. So I'm going to give That's you fine. the floor. I would like okay. you to sell my audience on why they should come check out your stream because oh, wow. okay. this is your opportunity you were in sales you got to talk yeah, to them. this right. is what we're doing we are all giving right, people right. new fun amazing content to enjoy i will be right back i'm gonna go hit the restroom okay. you plug your content okay and uh oh, don't wait well don't say anything that we get you banned from twitch okay i'll try not to it's very hard to not violate tos whoa hey 
We got a bunch of people following. Thank you so much. You As I always say when you follow, you just made Ben Shapiro's wife bone dry since it is Ben Shapiro that plays. But hey, everyone, I'm Famous Horse, as you already know. ML, gamer, all of that stuff. Main thing, I just hang out on Twitch almost every single night. I do all sorts of shit on here. We do Dungeons & Dragons on Monday. Most of the time, we just discourse, play stuff in the background. I've been having a lot more guests on lately. I've been coming on to Demon Mamas. I had Ellie Valley on last night. If you love his terrifying cartoons, I know I fucking do. So I'm streaming almost every day. So come by. We've got a great little community. I've just started. I'm slowly growing. I'm going to have to take off my headphones because the follow alert just keeps going off and interrupting my train of thought. But we've got a nice, small little community here. You're welcome to join the Discord, make friends. We mostly just talk about stuff that's uh, entertaining, stuff like that. We have our own sections for politics, and we like talking theory and discourse. But, yeah, I mean, if you guys got any questions for me in chat, I'll be happy to answer them while I still have the floor. I'm not that good at plugging. God, it keeps the notification just never stops. Swallow the horse pill. Yeah. Oh my God, is that a uh, is that a doom meat wad? I'm gonna have to steal that emote. Yes, drown in the alerts, and I will say all of my sub alerts are Alex Jones. Actually, almost every single one of my alerts is Alex Jones. But yeah, as I'm saying, we just like hanging out, talking politics. We usually got a rotating cast of five or six other people. It's like a visual podcast. We hang out. We watch scary movies sometimes. Actually, pretty much every night after we're done with the discourse, we watch ghost videos on YouTube. I think they're all real. I always think they're real. And everyone else in my discord is like, no, that's fake. You can see a wire. Fuck you. Ghosts are real. They are my friend, and I believe in them. Yes, let's let's get the Doom Pogs going. Let's get the Doom Pogs. I am. I have returned. Did you? How much of my belief in revolutionary? Yeah, I I think I did a pretty piss poor job of it. But I will say your audience has been blowing up my alerts nonstop. I had to take off my headphones because I kept getting distracted. Listen, that is awesome because let's just be real. This 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 whole sphere is exploding right now. There is a desperate need for more people making awesome as fuck content and talking yeah. about it with a leftist lens. So, yeah. I'm I, I mean, I love it. It's a great sphere. I'm so glad. Thank you for having me on. I've had a great time. Your audience is awesome. As I said, guys, we hang out pretty much every night, just kind of go through the news and recap. Not as formal as Drama Mama. Yeah, which is not all that formal to begin with, but that's okay. <laughs> The Drama Mama investigation where I go deep in on the drama. Yeah. Well, Famous Horse, it's been wonderful having you on. It's been um, great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to drop any, you have any like hot memes you want to drop before you head out? Or uh, or if not? Muted. You're muted. I'm muted? You're muted. I'm muted. Okay, well, I shouldn't be muted anymore. Well, anyways, thank you for having me on. Thank you, everyone who followed. You can find me on Twitter, Twitter, at Famous Horse, Twitch, at Famous Horse. Have a great night, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. Have a beautiful time. Bye. Look at that. That was a great conversation, was it not? Did I not promise you a good conversation? I have brought you and delivered you a very, very wonderful conversation. Famous Horse is wonderful. That was a fabulous conversation. Yeah. See, this is the thing. I strongly, strongly believe that there is so much motherfucking talent in online. He called the meatball. Yeah, that's right. They got the name right. Fuck yeah, he got the name right. Now, blood. No, we don't have...